Hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and I know I've got a proper mad barnet going on and it's, it, it's one of those weeks where you've recognised that we're in the Europa League. I saw one of the stadiums that we could play at next season. It's got a train going through the field and you know it's real because they're the type of teams that play in the Europa League and the Conference League and it just reminded me of a couple of things and and in terms of uploading i'm trying to not go a whole week without not uploading so I, this isn't like a proper redmond rounds but we do have some amazing guests and then you're going to be seeing the style of redmond rounds that you saw last week based on today's video it's sort of a season summary and a little bit of a reflection and i want to go into the psychology of football fans because i had a lot of people being very angry at me in my reaction to the southampton game by the way, we drew 4-4 with Southampton. So the biggest, biggest shame was, is for me, and I said this in one of the more recent videos, is that the biggest shame would be if Liverpool went on this amazing seven-game winning streak or whatever it was, and then got to a point where it was in our hands to be able to take it to the last day. The biggest shame would be is not maximising that opportunity and falling at the last hurdle, because then at least you can sit there and say... We done everything that we possibly can. Now, the thing that I realised is if I said to you 12 months ago that we would finish in a Europa League position, I never told you the context. I never told you how it would happen. I never told you there was injuries. I never told you there was lack of transfers. I never told you anything. If I told you after the Champions League final, we will finish in Europa League next season, you would say, James, stop being negative. James, stop being a mush. James, stop being this. And do you know what I hinted at two weeks after the Champions League final? If you go back to a hot Copics episode, which was posted two weeks after the Champions League final, I said, unless we don't show severe improvements or significant improvements, then that means we will decline and declining can be in a fine margin way because all we need to do is drop off 15 points which is very doable we saw it two seasons ago when Verge dropped out and stuff like that that's the difference of you being in Champions League and Europa League therefore I recommended the idea that that could happen to us this season now I didn't believe it or anything like this but anytime I would even bring up the thought I'd get Mario Alex and people in the comments saying James you're being very very negative and I said, what do you mean? And they said, there's no chance of Europa League, James. I said, no chance. They said, no chance. I was thinking, at the same Liverpool that was in Europa League a couple of years ago, there's no chance. They said, there's no chance. And I'm not trying to do this to say I told you so. I'm just saying they said no chance because they couldn't comprehend the idea of the mighty Liverpool and mighty Jurgen Klopp being in the mighty Europa League or the crappy Europa League, which is now the mighty Europa League in which Jurgen Klopp has never won. So it's OK. It's fine. It's all good. FSG are off the hook. Jurgen and the players are off the hook. It's fine. It was all a part of the master plan to get every single trophy, the one that Jurgen Klopp didn't get, to win a Europa League. It's fine. If I said that to you 12 months ago you'd have been fuming 12 months later that's the attitude and this is what I want to come into about the psychology of football fans and if you think about it you know a scouse kid who's recently moved out of his Mars like six months ago is telling you this you don't think football clubs won't know this you don't think teams who are hired specifically to adhere to what you want to hear what you want to see the stories that they want you to read that they know that you will react to you don't think they've got specific people employed to focus on that side of the game of course they do why because you invest further into the stories you keep buying shirts you believe in a process and i'm not trying to say Liverpool are the worst team in the Premier League. I'm just being realistic because last summer I tried to be realistic by recommending we could get Europa League and I was slandered on. I was crucified. Fast forward a year later, I'm now angry. The same way you would have been angry. You were angry at me mentioning it being in Europa League. I am now angry that we're in Europa League. And now I'm getting told that I'm negative and, it, and it's fine because Jurgen Klopp hasn't been in the Europa League before and all this nonsense. How can I... Be the guy who, who, who recommends an idea that eventually happens and now you're okay, but I'm not. And originally, I was trying to tell you this could happen and you said, no, James, you should be angry if that happens. That is where I want to analyse the psychology of football because it shows that it's down the drain in terms of expectations, which is fine. I just don't want to hear, okay, Champions League next year or Premier League next year because clearly... Whatever the aim we set at the start of the season, 
does not matter in the slippery slightest by the time it gets to May. So whatever you perceive your team to achieve in September doesn't matter by May because everything in between has happened and context matters. Oh, we've had a couple of injuries. Oh, it's been a bit of an off-season. Oh, we didn't buy enough people. Oh, this, oh, that. And, and people, the main argument to me was, oh, James, no one's actually buzzing with Europa League. But why is no one upset? Why is everyone fine? Is it because Bobby's going? Is it because James Milner's going? And then, why is nobody questioning the actual infrastructure of the football club? Why is nobody questioning, okay, there's a stadium expansion, but why is there a stadium expansion? Because Liverpool's a big football club. They're a team that we are aiming to get top four, is the point that I'm trying to get to. Because if FSG get top four, they don't only get Premier League revenue, they get Champions League revenue. Them two combined is all FSG wants because it's more than enough for them to profit. And they know they've got a manager who's capable of achieving those things. They know that they have got resources to where they can go into 60% of them and achieve such feat because it maximises their profits, which they have to do. They're businessmen and clearly very good ones at that because it's now got to a point where they haven't even achieved that. They've told you they want to compete on all fronts. You've believed that we're going to compete on all fronts. They haven't even hit their goal. So they haven't even hit their goal of getting Champions League. And yet you've been told that we're going to compete on all fronts. So not only not only are they missing out on their targets, they're also saying to you that we're going to continue to fight on all fronts and next summer we're going to do this and the war chest that we always seem to hear about in the media in which the club has influence on. Because of course they do. Because if a certain, if a certain media outlet goes into the club and even questions a certain topic... What happens? They'll get banned, they won't come back. So therefore, the media and the press are very limited to asking specific questions. Therefore, we can't delve into this and get actual, legit evidence. Which, basically, in conclusion, means they write the narrative. And if they write the narrative, they can control your expectations. And I have just gave you physical evidence on how they've done it. Because if I recommended Europa League to you 12 months ago, you'd have been fucking fuming and you'd have called me negative. 12 months later, I'm fuming that we got Europa League and I'm getting called negative because... What? Because what? Like, ugh, it makes no sense to me. And I do try and not get, like, upset about football. I don't think it's that important. But it's just the thinking. And then if you put that logic of thinking to football, then how do you put that logic of thinking to, like, life? Because you clearly get into the wrong answers if you don't realise you're being controlled in some sort of way. Um, but that's all it is. And, and the conclusion to it is just recognise what the expectations are. Now, going forward, I know we're not title challengers. Now, going forward, I know we're not going to be fighting for Champions Leagues. And we might do it on the odd season. But I know Liverpool are never going to be that club that has one season after another, after another of winning trophies. We're not that club. And no matter how many times they tell you we're going to be that club, we're not that club. And do you know, like the way we've got the most trophies in the country at the minute, that will not be the case for long. Because you'll see teams like City improving. You'll see teams like United going back and trying to maximise that great investment that they get every season. Then you've got Aston Villa entering into the top six, Newcastle entering into the top six. There's only so far that we can get to without new owners or new investments to where these teams won't surpass us because they will. And it's because we haven't maximised the opportunity while being on top to stay on top. We put it into the stadium so we can go with the short term um, financial solution of getting more fans in there and what for to spend a couple of extra million a summer. Um, I just don't think it makes too much sense to me. So I, I, here's the thing. I, I, I have full belief that these players can do these things, but I don't believe that we've got an infrastructure built. And I think this is by design to win like all the trophies. Um, and I don't mind that. I just want like more transparency about it. So next season, I'm, and don't call me negative because I said this last season, I was called negative and it happens and now I'm negative again. Next season, I simply just want us to compete for Europe. I want us to I want us to try and get top four. And I am setting those expectations for myself. So then when you're fuming about the title, I'm going to be able to sit there and say, do you know what, though? Like, I didn't expect this, you know what I mean? We've exceeded. Because I'm kind of done with the idea of like, oh, we've got to compete for the league and we've got to do this. I just don't see that same transparency from the club or reflection of the club in a manner. Like, you know, actions speak louder than words. And when you're, when you're doing certain things and, you know... Even just certain complications, like, it, it contradicts everything that you say about the plans and the ambitions. And then I actually wanted to bring up another point about the position 
of of how much control does Jürgen actually have? And, you know, then people ask me, because I'm fully Jürgen in, you're not going to get me to be Jürgen out anytime soon because nobody has presented a point good enough to where they can find a better solution for our current circumstances than Jürgen Klopp. Until someone does that, I am fully Jürgen Klopp in all the way. And it's not through blind faith. It's through what I know what he's doing because the fact we have been a Champions League team every year with Jürgen is definitely because of Jürgen. He's done, and he got 97 points. Arsenal got 84 this season, and they tried to compare this team to our team. They got 84. Now, fair enough, they've got time to get more and stuff like that. But 97 points, I will, I will confess with my tongue right now. Arsenal will never achieve 97 points. Never, never. They won't. Never achieve it. Clip it up so you can get it for the for the thing that will never happen. Uh, they will never get 97 points because it's near enough impossible to do. Uh, same with 99 points, which is what we got when we won the league. They'll never get 99 points. Um, it's just the way it is. It was something that was near enough impossible to do. And then we got Champions League every year or every full season that Jurgen Klopp has had at Liverpool. He's got top four. This is the first season that it hasn't happened. News came out, James Milner came out and said that I want uh, Jürgen Klopp wanted to keep me. But the club disagreed and didn't want to keep me. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean when a manager wants to keep a player and then the club says, no, we want him to go? And then what does it mean that Klopp wants to keep someone like Milner, who has clearly been finished for a long, long time? And someone who still has a very prominent role in the squad. Now, obviously, Milner's still got something there to that Brighton see where it's like he can offer something to our team for a season or two. But what does it mean if Jürgen Klopp is getting overrided on the Milner decision? What other decisions is he then getting told about? Or what other decisions does he disagree with the owners about but can't come out and speak about it? Because Jürgen Klopp hasn't came out and said, I wanted to keep James Milner, the club didn't want to keep James Milner. Why? Because he doesn't speak about the owners that way. He doesn't speak about their disagreements, nor should he. But they have disagreements on players in whom they should bring in. And clearly Klopp is just mainly there to be the coach of the ele- of the selection that is there. And I don't expect... I, I only expect Klopp's influence on certain transfers to be to explain to the player what the plan is for the future and how he's going to integrate them specifically into the squad. I don't think he's the guy calling up the, 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 the board of directors saying, we need this player, we need this player. There's a team for that. So our recruitment has got to be based solely on what this new... Board of Director is doing him, um, I think his name is. And then, therefore, that's a reflection on the owners because they're the same Board of Directors that the owners have brought in. And then, if the owners are going to be overlooking and disagreeing with the Egan Klopp's decisions, for instance, keeping James Milner, although I agree that we should have let go of James Milner, and that could be one example to where the owners was right, how many other situations has Klopp either asked for something or requested to keep somebody, and that hasn't happened? Sadio Mane, a great example, didn't stay because we didn't offer him enough money. And then if we keep Sadio Mane, how much better does that make us? Is, is Sadio Mane, if he stays, and we still get Darwin Nunes and all these improvements, but Mane stays, is he the difference of us being fourth and fifth? Is he the difference between another Champions League season? Because it was money. It was confirmed that it was money he wanted to go to Bayern Munich because they were offering a more lucrative contract. We know the way Mane lives. He likes to do a lot of charity. It made so much sense. But FSG weren't paying nowhere near the amount that Bayern Munich was. So if that's one decision. How many other decisions? I'm just basically trying to open your eyes to physical examples that you can go and see yourself. Where Milner says in an interview, and I quote, Jürgen wanted to keep me, but the club didn't. Therefore, the club overrided the manager's decision, which they're allowed to do. It's their money. They're paying Milner's wages. Jürgen isn't. So I'm not saying it's wrong. But if that's one example where the club have overrided Jürgen's decisions, how many more is there? in this season and in previous, that could limit Champions Leagues, or in this case, a top four uh, finish. And if they are doing that, how much Klopp really, How much does Klopp really have a say? And if he has a limited say, how good is Jürgen Klopp for what he's been able to do? The fact he's been able to win every single trophy with a limited say. The fact he's been able to finish top four every season by this one with a limited say. Limited resources, limited influence, a limited say, and he is literally just the face. He's the guy they put in the press conferences, he's the guy who'll go out and speak, but really he's the coach. That's what Jürgen Klopp is, he's, he's the man manager, he's the coach, he's the guy to build a team together to get this team playing well, and he's done brilliantly at that. That's why I can't be Jürgen Klopp out, but what I can be is questioning these owners, and for some reason, 
The, the people who deflect are the ones who say, oh, James, it's Jürgen, it's this, it's that. Guess what? Anything that's going wrong with the football club goes back to them. And if you're saying to me that there's something wrong with the investments, there's something wrong with the sporting director, there's something wrong with the manager, and there's something wrong with the players, then fucking hell, the owners have created an absolute clusterfuck of a mess of a football club right now. That's it. That's the only thing you can go back to. And until you start calling the spade a spade, you're going to keep going round in these circles, spending your money, going back, oh, believing in processes... I'm just breaking down the criteria on how these football clubs work. And the way that you should react to that is look at football a little bit differently. Now, I love the idea of individuals succeeding. I love the idea of Liverpool setting realistic expectations and actually achieving them. Opposed to saying we're going to win the league every year and then we don't do it. Because that just leads to constant disappointment and negativity. My, my way of thinking is actually to come to a conclusion of more positivity within the fan base. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to keep getting lied to about expectation. We hit them sometimes, might even exceed in other times. But in the main, we will drop off. And then how consistent is this stability after Jürgen leaves? Because right now we've got a gem in Jürgen. So I want to emphasise that there's a problem in FSG. Then I wanted to emphasise how much of a gem Jürgen Klopp is. So they're the first two parts of the video. Now I want to ask the question, what happens if Jürgen leaves? We've got a mess of an ownership. We've got a gem of a manager. What happens when he goes? Can we trust the recruitment on FSG's part to recruit another gem of a manager? Because it's hard enough even if you're good at recruiting people. But FSG have a bit of a shaky track record at recruiting certain things. If they recruit the wrong person, what then happens to Liverpool? Is it just 10 more years of 5th, 6th and competing for Europa League? Because then if that is the case, did they lie about competing for the league title or doing these things? And if that was a lie, are you okay with that? Do you see what I'm trying to get to? I could go on forever in this video, but you know what? I'll leave it there. Thank you very much um, for watching this Redman rounds up. It, it, the intention weren't to be negative. I actually wanted to speak about Carvalho leaving as well, but or possibly leaving. He hasn't officially left yet. Um, but I think that that'll be good enough to leave there. Let 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 let's exercise what we've just talked about in the comments down below, and then in the next video we can go in a little bit further. I do hope you enjoy. Do smash a like if you did, and um, subscribe if you want to as well. Anyway. A summit of transfer rumours, exciting things and debates and topics with fans coming on the channel. It's going to be boss. Guys, love to you and your mothers and I'll see you all in a bit. Peace.